John Davenroll and John Pertwee was an English actor, entertainer and cabaret performer. Pertwee spent 18 years playing Chief Petty Officer Pertwee in the Navy Lark on BBC Radio, and also starred as the third Doctor in the science fiction series Doctor Who from 1970 to 1974, and as the title character in the series Wurtzel Gummidge from 1979 to 1981. As an actor, Petri appeared in many comedy roles and was noted for his rubbery features and ability to affect silly voices. Earlier in his career, Petri had worked as a vaudeville comedian, performed at the Glasgow Empire Theatre and shared a bill with Max Wall and Jimmy James. Towards the end of his life, he entertained audiences with a one-man show called Who is John Petri? Biography, Early Life, born in Chelsea, London, and having Huguenot ancestry, John was the son of noted screenwriter and actor Roland Petrie and distant cousin of actor Bill Petrie. Petrie Euro unregistered trademark S mother, Avis Gulls, separated from his father Roland when Petrie was young. His father remarried, and his mother found a new partner, with whom Petrie did not build a relationship. OBC Euro unregistered trademark S sister Daphne married Captain Philip Cecil Close and became the mother of Petrie's cousin, the writer St. John Lee Close. Coincidentally, Petrie was the writer's first choice for the role of Captain George Mannering in Dad's Army. The actor Henry Ainley, a close friend of his father, was his godfather, and Ainley's son Anthony appeared as the master, a renegade Time Lord who was the Doctor's greatest enemy, versus Petrie in the 1983 Doctor Who anniversary story The Five Doctors. Education Petrie was educated at Frencham Heights School, an independent school in Rowledge, near Farnham in Surrey at Sherborne School in Sherborne in Dorset, and at some other schools from which he was expelled. After school, he went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, from which he was also expelled after he refused to play a Greek wind during one of the lessons, feeling it was a waste of both his time and his father's money. He was also accused of writing graffiti about the tutors on the lavatory walls. Early career, Petrie was an officer in the Royal Navy, spending some time attached to the highly secretive Naval Intelligence Division during the Second World War, working alongside James Bond author Ian Fleming and reporting directly to Prime Minister Winston Churchill. In an interview conducted in 1994, he said, I did all sorts. Teaching commandos how to use escapology equipment, compasses in brass buttons, secret maps in white cotton handkerchiefs, pipes you could smoke that also fired a .22 bullet all sorts of incredible things. He was a crew member of HMS A. Hood and was transferred off the ship for officer training shortly before she was sunk by the German battleship Bismarck, losing all but three men. During his time in the Navy, Petrie woke up one morning after a drunken night out while in port to find a tattoo of a cobra on his right arm. After the war, he made a name for himself as a comedy actor on radio in Waterlogged Spa alongside Eric Barker and Puffney Post Office in which he played a hapless old postman with the catchphrase it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you tears them up. From 1959 to 1977, he had a long-running role as the conniving chief petty officer between in the Navy Lark on BBC Radio. He was known as a Danny K look-alike, and his impersonation of K can be seen in the film Murder at the Windmill. In 1953, he played Charlie Sterling in Will Any Gentleman. Future Doctor Who actor William Hartnell was also in the film. He played Inspector Martin. On stage, he played the part of Lycus in the 1963 London production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum with Frankie Howard and appeared in the smaller role of Crassus in the 1966 film version. He appeared as Sidney Tate in the comedy film Ladies Who Do. In 1966, Petrie starred alongside Donald Sindon in the original West End production of the long-running comedy There's a Girl in My Soup and also appeared in four Carry On films, Carry On Cleo, Carry On Screaming, Carry On Cowboy and Carry On Columbus. On television, he started off with small parts in children's shows featuring Richard Heen's Mr. Pastry character. Later he made an appearance in the Avengers episode From Venus with Love as Brigadier Whitehead, and in the 1970s, he guest starred as a vicar in the Goodies episode Wacky Wales. He had one of his most memorable film roles in the Amicus Horror Compendium The House That Dripped Blood. Filming in the summer of 1970, 
between his first and second Doctor Who seasons, Petrie played the lead in the last segment of the film as Paul Henderson, a deliciously arrogant horror film star who meets his quasi-comedic doom thanks to a genuine vampire cloak. He was married twice. His first marriage was in 1955, to Jean Marsh, whom he divorced in 1960. Later that same year he married Inchborg Rosar. Together they had two children, both of whom were to become actors, a daughter, Daryl, in 1961, and a son, Sean, in 1964. Doctor Who, in 1969, Petrie was selected by producer Peter Bryant and story editor Derek Sherwin to take over as the Doctor from Patrick Troughton in the television series Doctor Who. Petrie had asked his agent to apply for the role for him and was surprised to find he was already on the shortlist. He was the second choice of the producer. Ron Moody was the first but was unavailable. In a departure from the Doctor's first two incarnations, Petrie played the character as an active crusader with a penchant for action and fancy clothes, even while the character was exiled on Earth and serving with Unit. He played the Doctor for five seasons from early 1970 to mid-1974, a longer stint than either of his predecessors in the role, William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton, although he appeared in fewer episodes than Hartnell, as the BBC relaxed its shooting schedule from 40-plus episodes a season to 25 to 26. In early 1974, Petrie announced he would step down as the Doctor in order to resume his stage career in The Bedwinner, also citing typecasting in the role as the reason for leaving, though later he would say that the catalyst for his departure was the death of his good friend and co-star Roger Delgado and the departures of co-star Katie Manning and producer Barry Letts. His last full-time appearance in the series was in the story Planet of the Spiders in June 1974, and Tom Baker replaced him in the role. Petrie's tenure in Doctor Who has been praised by the Daily Telegraph critic Dr. Tim Stanley as the high point of the program as a serious piece of science fiction. Petrie later reprised the role in the 20th anniversary story The Five Doctors and the Children in Need Story Dimensions in Time, in two radio adventures and on stage in Doctor Who A Euro The Ultimate Adventure. On April 14, 1971, Petrie was the subject of Thames Television's This Is Your Life. Wurzel Gummidge, after a stint between 1974 and 1978 as the host of the Thames Television murder mystery game show Who Done It? Petrie took the starring role in Wurzel Gummidge, based on the books written by Barbara Youf and Todd. First aired in 1979 on ITV, the series saw Petrie as a scarecrow, as well as utilizing several comedic voices. The show was an immediate hit and ran on the channel until 1981. Keen to continue beyond this, Petrie campaigned for the series and it was picked up by a New Zealand TV network in 1987. Wurzel Gummidge Down Under aired for the next two years and was screened in the UK on Channel 4. In 1995, Petrie played the role one last time in a one-off special for ITV, which celebrated 40 years of the channel. Petrie also played the character on stage and recorded an album, Wurzel Gummidge Sings, as well as a Christmas single. Other roles, in 1976, Petrie voiced and appeared in the television advertisement which promoted the Green Cross Code by use of the mnemonics Blink. Also in 1976, Petrie starred with Australian actress Julie Anthony in a West End production of the musical Irene, playing the camp fashion designer Madame Lucy. The production opened at the Adelphi Theatre, London and enjoyed a long run of over 900 performances. Petrie features on the cast recording album produced by Norman Newell for Emmy Records. He also voiced the character of Spotty in the 1980s cartoon series Super Ted and in 1985 he starred in Do You Know the Mile Highway, a television adaptation of Carl Wittlinger's stage play in which he played Dr. Neuros and another nine characters. In 1995 Petrie also had the key voice of death and other voice characterizations in the PC and PlayStation renditions of Discworld. Also in 1995, John Pertwee played General Von Kramer in the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles episode Attack of the Hawkman. In 1975 he played a memorable role of the Colonel in the children's film One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing. Later life, he returned to the role of the Doctor in the 1983 20th anniversary television special The Five Doctors and in the 1993 charity special Dimensions in Time for Children in Need. 
He also portrayed the Doctor in the stage play Doctor Who A Euro The Ultimate Adventure which toured theatres in the United Kingdom from March to June 1989. During the 1990s, he made a guest appearance in the Lords and Ladies episode of the BBC Radio 4 comedy series Harry Hill's Root Corner, playing a Time Lord and also spoofed the role in the Radio 4 comedy The Skyvers. He also presented the Doctor Who video releases The Troughton Years and The Petrie Years in the early 1990s. In 1993, Petrie was featured in the unofficial 30th anniversary VHS release of Doctor Who entitled 30 Years of Time Travel and Beyond. When asked in an interview for this documentary if the show should be brought back he simply replied with no. No, but believed if it did come back a lot more money would need to be spent on the series along with a new production team. Petrie would continue to act in films and television as well as make appearances worldwide in support of Doctor Who. Ultimately, Petrie was successful in seeing the third Doctor return to the airwaves with two audio productions for BBC Radio, The Paradise of Death and The Ghosts of End Space. In April 1995, he appeared in Devious, an amateur video drama set between the second Doctor's trial at the end of the War Games and before the start of Spearhead from Space, which shows an interim Doctor played by Tony Garner being told he was never meant to be the Doctor, and that the third will complete him. Petrie's scenes in that role are the only pieces of the video that have been released. Petrie's final film role was in a short film, Cloud Cuckoo for Scottish Screen, released on June 18, 1994. His last formal television appearance was on Silla's Surprise, Surprise, broadcast on April 21, 1996. At the date of his death, Petrie was regularly being seen at the tail end of an enigmatic UK TV commercial for mobile phone operator Vodafone, dressed somewhat in his flamboyant doctor manner, his character walked wordlessly across an alleyway in sight of a Liverpool landmark, and entered a garage evidently containing some kind of time machine. Death and Legacy Petrie continued on the Doctor Who convention circuit, and with his voice and television acting, until his death from a heart attack in Connecticut on May 20, 1996, at the age of 76. Some reports place the location of his death in New York. His immediate successor in the starring role of Doctor Who, Tom Baker, paid tribute, saying, I'm very sorry to hear the news. I was a great admirer of such a stylish actor. Another of his successors in the role, Colin Baker, said, he was a man of such presence and stature. I can't believe he has gone, it is a great shock. Of all of the interpretations of the doctors his was the most straight in terms of avoiding comedy. His body was cremated at Putney Vale Crematorium with a toy Wurzel gummidge affixed to the coffin, following the instructions in his will. His death was just six days after the 14th May 1996 American broadcast of the Doctor Who television film, which used in its opening credits a logo based on the one from his era of the television series. The BBC broadcast of this television film, on May 27, 1996, featured a dedication to Petrie at its end. His last association with the series was posthumous. With the approval of his widow, Inge Borg, his voice was utilized as part of the plot of the Big Finish Productions 40th anniversary Doctor Who audio drama, Zograus, appearing as messages from the Doctor's TARDIS as it attempted to help the currently corrupted Eighth Doctor. Petrie's voice was culled from the fan-produced Doctor Who film Devious, portions of which were recorded just prior to his death. Petrie wrote two autobiographies, Moon Boots and Dinner Suits, which primarily covers his life and career prior to Doctor Who, and the posthumously published Doctor Who, I Am the Doctor a Euro John Petrie a Euro unregistered trademark s final memoir which was worked on from April 1995 until May 8, 1996, which covered his life during and after the series. In 2000, John Petrie, the biography by Bernard Bale was published by Andrew Copyright Deutsch, and included a few chapters by Petrie's widow Inge Borg. Archival footage of Petrie has been utilized several times in the revived Doctor Who. Footage appears in The Next Doctor, when the Tenth Doctor shows Jackson Lake an infostump about himself, and in the Eleventh Hour, when the Eleventh Doctor rhetorically asks the Atraxi how previous alien invasion attempts were stopped. Footage of Petrie was utilized in the name of the Doctor to depict his Doctor interacting with a version of Clara Oswald, 
and in the day of the Doctor to depict the Third Doctor assisting his other incarnations in sending Gallifrey to a pocket universe to protect it from the Daleks. Discography In 1966 Petrie contributed to the children's album Children's Favorites by Emmy and Paul Hamlin. Songs sung by him include The Runaway Train, Froggy Went A Courtin, My Grandfather's Clock, Three Little Fishes, and I Know An Old Lady. Published by Music for Pleasure and Mono, the recordings were produced by Norman Newell, with a synopsis written on the back by Roger St. Pierre. On the front cover is the picture of a glove puppet by Carol Patmore and Rima Reed. At least one of the songs, The Runaway Train, was released as a single on Music for Pleasure. In 1972 he released, with June Whitfield, Wonderful Children's Songs on the Contour label. In 1972, while still in the role of the Doctor, he released a vocal narration over the Doctor Who theme music untitled, Who is the Doctor, on Purple Records. In 1976 he starred in the Emmy original cast recording of the West End musical Irene, in which he had enjoyed a long run, playing Madame Lucy at the Adelphi Theatre, London. In 1976 he recorded a promotional flexi-disc for Heinz called The Noodle Doodle Man. In 1980 he released Wurtzel's song, from the album Wurtzel Gamid Sings. The single reached number 33 on the UK charts in March. A second single was released in 1987 when the series was revived, but this met with less success. Also released was a single of Yesterday, semi-spoken word and, When I'm 64, in the guise of Wurtzel to aid a hospital charity. Other chart action came in 1993 when an audio release of the radio play The Paradise of Death reached number 48 in the album charts. In 1984 he featured in the computer game audio tape of Deus Ex Machina by Automata UK, released for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum in 1984. Filmography, A Yank at Oxford, The Four Just Men, Toad of Toad Hall, Trouble in the Air, a Piece of Cake, William Comes to Town, Murder at the Windmill, Helter Skelter, Dear Mr. Prohack, Miss Pilgrim's Progress, The Body Said No, Mr. Drake's Duck, Will Any Gentleman, The Gay Dog, A Yank and Ermin, It's a Wonderful World, The Ugly Duckling, Just Joe, Not a Hope in Hell, Nearly a Nasty Accident, Carry On Cleo, Runaway Railway, You Must Be Joking, I've Got a Horse, Carry On Cowboy, Carry on screaming. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum, up in the air, the house that dripped blood, one of our dinosaurs is missing, wombling free, adventures of a private eye, number one of the secret service, the water babies, the boys in blue, the eye zone solution, carry on Columbus, cloud cuckoo, the young Indiana Jones chronicles, references. External links. John Pertwee at the Internet Movie Database. John Pertwee Biography A Euro British Film Institute, Interview with John Pertwee Conducted in March 1996 at the Wayback Machine, Action Who A Euro John Pertwee Article at Castabris.com, John Pertwee's career including the Navy Lack at HTTP, www.castria.net, An Hour with John Pertwee John Pertwee Reminisces, Including Time Serving on the Hood A Euro Streaming Audio.